I'm really a double act uh, with my colleague, Dr. Claire Searle. Um, and our story really starts because we were two practices about 100 yards, in fact less than that, apart uh, in West Watford. And in 2002, we decided that we would build a building together. Claire, stand up and, and <coughs> in fact, why don't you come over and then we can speak together. Um, and so I'm from Coach House Surgery and Claire is from Park End Surgery and we are currently sharing a building and sharing various tasks and DLH we will come on to in a second um, but although we are in one building we are still two practices but have some experience on how the working uh, together agenda uh, does work. Um, Pete asked me to bring clinical examples in so I thought I would start and finish with uh, the clinical examples and the, the patient who is always needs to be at the centre of this. And a win, which is an example uh, for me of how we could do things, is uh, somebody who you all recognise. I think we used to call them revolving door patients. I think we now have to call them frequent flyers or perhaps something else. Uh, this was uh, a very elderly lady who lived in very, lives in very parlous circumstances and her only recourse to seeking help <coughs> was always to call an ambulance, which meant that she always ended up in our local general hospital, whereby she went through a lengthy process of assess assessments on every single occasion. Working together meant that despite she the fact, and some people should probably close their ears at this point, despite the fact she uh, had too many assets in theory to get social care funding, we were able to negotiate a, so a social care package that went in and also that the ambulance <coughs> service knew that if she called, they went to assess but then directly contacted the rapid response team in Watford and thereby, by joining up the dots outside of the hospital, we have successfully, until this week, typical isn't it, kept her out of hospital. So we can do these things, but from my perspective at the minute, that took an awful lot of hard work, and integrating would be so much nicer, so that it all happened in a one-stop way. Very quickly then, about direct local health, we were set up, we set ourselves up in around 2007 and incorporated in 2009 really to address the problems that we then saw. Um, the initial one actually was the uh, threat of the renegotiation of the out of hours contract, um, but Huck were obviously in a far, far better place uh, to move forward with that than we. But having got ourselves set up, we realised that the opportunities were there. Uh, to have uh, information sharing and uh, using our colleagues to best manage uh, patients and triage. And we currently successfully have an ophthalmology CATS which has been running for a number of years. And Claire also runs a gynae CATS. Do you want to say a bit about how that works? Um, really, my point is that we can work effectively together. We, um, and we uh, essentially it relies on shared risk taking and um, trusting one's colleagues um, uh, with the patient. I think uh, services are much more effective if you put the patient first, and I, I know it's already been said, but it cannot be said too often, that if we look at these journeys on how to shorten it, uh, patients to their most effective management, and I think guided services are, are um, getting the patient to the right place, is a very, very good example of just how well we can actually achieve that within our, our, our localities. We've also been keen to push the agenda about keeping uh, people out of hospital, as Avni knows. Um, and I think we, you know, we have to be honest, it, it is a struggle, but we have currently got running a doctor running alongside our rapid response service at the weekend. Um, the soft data is that the rapid response team and the hospice at home team absolutely love it because it means that they can get a doctor response far more quickly than the very stretched out of our services and it's a local GP with local knowledge and in many ways for me, uh, dare I say it, it is turning the clock back to those days when actually we did a lot more of this on our own. Now, I'm not for one moment suggesting we should go back to that 
but I am saying that one of the things we have to recall and remember is that continuity is really important for the patient. <coughs> um, and I echo Claire that the future for us is about going into working with partners, understanding and willing to share risk and get away from this whole sort of uh, competitive provision whereby risk gets put entirely on one or other party. And the future for me is in, as many of the projects show, is in sharing the gains of risk sharing and putting the patient journey at the heart of doing that. So I'll finish really with the challenge, which is the difficulties that we had this weekend of a very poorly patient <coughs> who didn't want to go into hospital for very good reason, who didn't have services at home, who needed fluids at home, needed antibiotics, needed a hospital bed over the weekend, and we got there in the end, but it still takes an awful lot of clinician time. I think it probably totted up four hours of my time, let alone uh, the time of rapid response, four or five hours of that, just to get rapid organisation. So we're not there yet, and those are the sort of cases where once, and that for me is, that is the perfect outcome. When we can do stuff like that quickly, and with one person leading, then we can pat ourselves on the back and say that we have got to integrated working. So it is now our task to introduce Tom Carhill, who is waving for me from table seven.